Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Um, popular strategies in a rising volatility environment, um, w- w- which I think actually is forthcoming in the coming months. Um, buying straddles and selling straddles, I'll focus on these two right now. And when I say buying a straddle, I'm talking about you know um, buying a call and a put at the same strike price of the same month. Um, and so, if I was to uh, if I was to, to to look at something like that, I can go ahead and and you know um, um, take a peek at an implementer straddle on the euro. I can be long the EUI puts, or I could be and, and converse at the same time concurrently be long the EUI calls as well. Uh, right now, I think that, that the time behind that there is a lot of value out there um, in buying the EUI puts and buying the EUI calls. I think it's all about exposure and allocation. I think if you you, you can allocate. Two to three percent of your risk budget, along with properly delta hedging. By delta hedging, I mean that you know you're not just long the straddle and then you hold it till expiration, but you're long the straddle and you actively manage that position. And I've published a couple of articles on dynamically delta hedging portfolio risk and also gamma scalping um, FX options. And so, if you guys email me for that, I can send you the links to that right there. Um, as I've written a couple of those articles over the last few years, which discuss you know if you were to get long so, you know the straddle here and then. The underlying spot were to rally up two or three hundred pips, you know, to to a key resistance point. Um, we can go ahead and and spot that in. Um, Dr. Hope, I'll go ahead and post that um, at the end of the discussion here. That's my that's my little teaser to keep you waiting. Um, and we can, in in that regard, you know, keep that out there and and, and run it accordingly. So, <coughs> uh, taking a, a quick look at some of the some of the software I use, I talked earlier about. Um, CQG, because I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty focused and intense derivatives trader, I, I work off, uh, off of CQG, off of Bloomberg, and off of uh, Trading Technologies, um, X Trader. But for, for my analytics, I use a lot of CQG and, and, and some Bloomberg as well. Um, the screen layout on CQG, it's very cut and dry. The term structure here we can see from looking at the euro um, over the weekend, there's 27 days until the current expiration. Implied vol sitting about 10.5%. So I, if I were to buy a 134.5 call, 134.5 put, it would be about, 100 and, about 308 um, ticks um, to, to put this position on. As you can see, my max theoretical loss about that would be around, just shy of $4,000 for a one and one That's my max risk over the next 27 days. But if you're long the straddle into the weekend, the big news happens. You can step in and fade some of this move um, and, and watch your delta adjust accordingly. So going into the weekend, we're sitting at 134.50 on the uh, – on this position here, and so as we as as we got into the weekend, um, that uh, that 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 position we went from 130 to 50 to 136 50. Our uh, our 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 delta went on that on that trade probably from from being delta neutral to probably being long you know long 30 tenths or long 30 percent of an underline or long 25 percent of an underline. So let's say I was long 10 contracts. Okay, I can then get short three or two and a half of the underline to go back to being delta neutral again. As it turned out, they faded that move over the weekend a little bit, gave back some of those profits, and, and, and you know, and that helps you pay some, some of that rent um, with everything else being equal. So when I talk about delta hedging, I mean, you know, you're maneuvering around a position, you've defined your risk limit with, uh, with, with, with this $4,000 initial position, and, and, and I'll let Steve comment in terms of some of the machinations that go to, uh, to um, some of the machinations that take place. And you can email him at S Meisinger, that's S M E I Z I N G E R at ISE dot com and Steve will go ahead and give um give that over the uh um at the end of this presentation again. But again, this is just some basic ideas in terms of how to set that up. I'm gonna throw out a, a more of a complex scenario here and then I then I really want to open the panel up because there's a lot of questions I see stacking up um uh, to that to that right there. And so putting together a, a portfolio this is what I'm building right now, and this is, is something that I think that, that you may want to consider as well. And if not this, this position itself, at least the thought process that goes behind it. And that is um, I'm building a long volatility position in terms of long British pound, long euro, long Swiss franc, that's CHF, you know, GDP, EUR, CHF, <coughs> going short volatility on, on CAD, Aussie, and, uh, and Japanese yen. 
and uh, and so if, if there is some if there is some risk out there, I'm, I'm hoping to, to mitigate some of my Vega um, exposure both on the both on the long side of it and on the short side of it as well. And so you can short a straddle um, on a basket of CAD, Aussie, Japanese yen. I'm gonna go long a straddle on a basket of Euro, GBP, and CHF, and I can do all of that using the IFC options to make that possible. Now, um, if you have an equity account, I'm also looking to be long a straddle on gold and silver because for the scenario that photos talked about, <coughs> I think that CAD and Aussie can be a little more insulated in that regard. I think the positive carry of Aussie is going to keep Aussie in more of a range. Um, and, and, and I think some of the, uh, you know, and CAD could pull back as well. You know, I, I mean, I realize some of, some of the risk that, that, that's there. Without going over every single component of every one of these currency crosses, though, in general, I think we're going to see more volatility across the European currency complex than we are in some of the, uh, some of the other G10, G10 currencies out there. And so in that regard, I also think that if, if what Fortis talks about plays out, and, and I think implied vol is cheap on gold now anyway, but I think if, this, if, if, this, if we get you know, a, lot of, uh, a lot of loss of faith in, in, in the currencies and in, in, in the sovereign debt spreads out there in terms of what debt really exists, I think there's going to be a massive flight to gold and, and to silver as well. And, and being long volatility on that can sort of very nicely. If there's not, however, if the deflationary component sets in, and this is what I learned from being actually long gold in the fall of 2008, um, is that at least I was long a call spread or, or long the premium that I actually benefited from that because I can delta hedge around it and, and didn't lose anywhere near as much. But if we do get major deflationary concerns that pop in the market, it's not, it wouldn't be unprecedented to see gold shave 200, 250 bucks, um, 25, 25%. Over the course of four to six weeks, there's, there's a number of times in the last five years where that precedent's taken place. It wasn't just in the crisis of 2008. I think that there's a really great um, way to maneuver around those positions. And then lastly, I think that I'm going to be short of bear call spread on crude because I think that, that irrespective of what ultimately plays out, I think crude's in some trouble. I think that, that, that the supply glut that exists out there and some of the technical topping patterns, which I've seen, coupled with the rest of this portfolio, not only standalone by itself, but coupled with the rest of this portfolio, um, I think that, that, that that's a nice blend in terms of how this, how this can all play out. And so just kind of discuss this again, long volatility on, on or long, long a basket of straddles on, uh, on the British pound euro and Swiss franc, short a basket of straddles on CAD, Aussie, and Japanese yen, um, going short a bear call spread, or, you know, um, and uh, we'll put spread on, on crude because I think that, you know, again, it's a little bit toppy in here, but, uh, but it, can, it can definitely, you know, trade within a range. And then this combination, I, I, re I believe and I'm very confident, build a unique volatility exposure that, and that a trader can delta hedge around accordingly, which, again, I encourage you guys to, to check out some of those, uh, some of those articles which I've produced. Now, on to, on to the real stuff. Um, I have a, a spread trading webinar going on next Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be trading live with my own money in real time for all to see, win, lose, or draw. recommend you guys go to my website. Um, that's OSOKTrading.com to sign up. You must sign up by Sunday. It is free registration, but if you do not sign up by Sunday for Tuesday's event, you will not be able to get in. Um, also doing a live, for those of you Chicago natives, uh, I'll be in Chicago from May 9th to May 15th. I'll be putting on a, uh, a live training event at that point in time as well for a full day, um, um, which I'm very excited about. I love the interaction. It's only limited to 25 people, so I encourage you to, to take a look at that. But you have access to me, and normally one day of, of mentorship sitting next to me, which I only do a handful of times each year, costs about 5000 bucks a day, depending on your respective um, circumstance, sometimes more. And so I, I do a lot of consulting with emerging managers for proprietary professional traders out there. Um, I, I've worked with, with a lot of guys who are looking to make the next step professionally. Uh, if that's your interest, that, that's truly my passion, is along with the markets, it's helping traders who, who are serious about this grow. It's how Fotis and I came, came into being, um, helping each other develop um, professionally and helping him grow his business as well and uh, just, just, just has blossomed into a great relationship. And so I encourage you guys, Jay Neto at, OSOK, at OSOKTrading.com is, uh, is, is, you know, is the best way to get a hold of me um, and, uh, and go, go, go from there. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.